So hello everyone, and again I'm here with another topper from uh, the Maro SS course and uh, course, and this is Dr. Vandana Kapoor with us today, and she has got an AIMS merit list of one and combined merit list of three in the INISS. Wonderful, well done, Dr. Vandana, and many congratulations to you. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> so I'm sure it's a great day for you and. Uh, all the you know whatever preparations you've put in finally comes to fruition and like what you know aims merit list one is something that everybody dreams of when they are preparing so how do you yes, feel no, definitely um i feel surprised we can say <laughs> <laughs> sure. i wasn't expecting this uh, greater result so and what a good. pleasant surprise it is isn't it yeah. yeah. So, uh, so today's interview, I would just like to, you know, um, uh, so first of all, let me actually introduce you to the audience who is watching, watching this video. So Dr. Vandana has done her um, MBBS from Ames Jodhpur and she's completed her MBBS in 2019. And she's been a gold medalist in anatomy and general surgery. And she's been the best all rounder student in the female category. Also, she's had her uh, MS training from PGI Chandigarh, the prestigious institute, and she's gotten a, a third prize in paper presentation at the European Society of Vascular Surgery Conference at Belfast in Ireland. So very nice. And you've got a great CV already to start with. And um, <laughs> really my pleasure to introduce you to everyone. And uh, from now on, you will do most of the talking and I'll sit and listen. So first of all, I would just want to uh, understand your preparation journey uh, for the people who are, uh, you know, wanting to prepare early on. Let's say, you know, when did you decide that you wanted to become a plastic surgeon and what was uh, your preparation strategy? Let Just walk us through that, please. Uh, Ma'am, basically, I decided in my fifth semester of junior residency that I wanted to pursue plastic surgery, but I did okay. not start reading it that time because yeah. i wanted to concentrate on my ms exams at that time course, and i yeah. wanted to give a full reading of gender surgery so my ms exams ended in june uh, this year and in july i started reading plastic surgery and i started from grabs grabs and mm. smith initially i used to read one chapter and then i used to see your video regarding okay. that chapter and okay. then add on the points that you have mentioned in the video then i used okay. to do the question bank of the same chapter and then add mm. on to that so oh. I completed uh, first reading around in August, starting mm -hmm. or mid of the August. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, th uh, thereafter, I took a little break because mm -hmm. uh, I felt like I was not uh, doing up to the Obviously, market. It's such a short time when you are, you know, it's almost like a power packed kind of a preparation. So yes, after mid August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like for 15, 20 days, I took a break again. And then mm -hmm. after I started again reading, I revised my Grab and Smiths and I revised your videos again. Mm -hmm. Just before the exams, also like um, four or five days, I gave just to binge watch your videos. Oh, okay. So you actually. That was my binge. revision strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so that means that in your uh, master's during your residency, you, you did not really do anything to prepare for plastic surgery. No, I did not, ma'am. See, that's what, you know, see, uh, when people ask me that, you know, what is the best strategy? I tell them that, you know, you have to devise your own strategy. There can be a path which can be a guide, but everybody has their own, you know, separate ways of preparing. And I think you gave everything that you had after your MS, where people are generally relaxed, you know, MS ho gaya now, you know, we'll chill for some time. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's where I think that was your edge. And. Uh, because your preparation duration was almost coincided with the exam, like immediately after that. So I think the retention would also have been a little more. Yes. Uh, so how many hours did you watch and did you speed it up when you watched the video? We'd just like to know a little bit of it. Uh, I used to watch it on 2x, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh -huh. so, uh, and how many hours did you uh, uh, devote to reading graphs and watching the videos? Uh, Ma'am, I think like chapters and grabs are not that lengthy. So I used to finish like one chapter in two, three hours maximum. And uh, then watching the video was like another half an hour only, half an hour to 45 minutes. Hmm. So hmm. that uh, completed with the chapter. 
and then for question bank like one hour extra and then adding all these that was the first reading but then all this made easy uh, uh, was made easy in the second reading because everything was compiled in one text and okay. I, i just had to go through one right so did you make notes in in your textbook itself did you make any uh, notes yes ma'am yes ma'am i uh, highlighted the points that you highlighted in the video i marked it with another pen and uh, if any additional information was there i used to write on the top with a no uh, key notes with no notepad notes. so that means that became your uh, go to thing in the second uh, in the revision that you were doing yes ma'am right and see mostly my lectures because i wanted to keep it simple and lucid for people to understand because they this is their first interaction with plastic surgery when they're watching my lecture that most of them like you know few people have had plastic surgery residency before but then in general mostly the students will have their first interaction through my videos so i wanted to make it a little lucid simple for them to you know understand that it's not that difficult you know so mm. i think uh, and mostly lot of things have been taken for gra from grabs so i think you almost had two revisions right at that time when after reading when you watch the video so twice it's already done and the third time it's almost like a third revision and um, so uh, what uh, in in the second stage what questions were asked do you recall uh yes ma'am i remember uh the first of all they asked me to introduce myself and they wanted to know how i uh, chose plastic surgery and i told them about the groin flap that i saw that got okay. me interested in plastic we'd like to hear that story as well <laughs> so uh i was in my fifth semester and uh, we used to have trauma post things so okay. the first plastic surgery case that i saw was groin flap and it was very amazing that how they uh, formed an entire thumb from abdominal tissue so right. that is how my interest started in plastic surgery that was the first instance yeah so they so were doing the postings in pgi chandigarh right uh what ma'am you have the specialty postings in your ms ha, in pgi yes ma'am that is a very good part of pgi they have very much emphasis on super specialty postings So, because that builds your base uh, and you yeah. have exposure to multiple i remember in my uh, masters as well uh, i did my masters from bhu and there also we had all these super specialty postings uh, with different uh, different you know specialties in surgery and there you get your at least the feel of the branch if you want to yeah. you know take it up later on yeah also that it's that's very that's necessary to go into all the branches and then decide it's i yeah instead of yeah. just hypothesizing yes right yeah so yes yeah. then so, uh, uh, i told the story in the interview also and then oh. they started asking me about growing flap <laughs> oh. <And> okay <laughs> i expected this question <laughs> did you specifically tell them about the growing flap because you were already very well prepared no no i was not well prepared about it but i expected oh. that they might ask about growing flap oh. so i yeah, did it. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. then uh, there was an image about uh, radian of palsy and radian. they asked me how to manage it Uh, the second question was post bone contracture of the neck ha huh. so they asked me how will you intubate uh, the patient if you are not able to do it with the right endotracheal intubation huh. and uh, the second station was uh, of cleft surgeries so huh. um, he asked me about uh, the types of cleft surgeries cleft palate and cleft lip surgeries that i know the names of them and uh, he asked me about the four flap palatoplasty ha huh. um the next station was also about feeding yeah, uh, about uh, how do you feed the cleft palate patients how advice what advice do you give and uh, the last session was about uh, uh, microvascular anastomosis they asked me about uh, who received a nobel prize in uh, plastic surgery uh, that was alexis carroll and uh, they asked me about the classification of nerve injury so uh, sedan and sinner line classification okay So, uh, so classification of nerve injuries. This was mostly a like a theory question, right? Um, um, yeah. Right. But I think, well, yeah, it's not a difficult one. So, perhaps a lot of people prepared. So that means you had one, two, three, four stations. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am, and uh, a station with HOD said about general introduction. Okay. Ah, uh, so that means five altogether. so you had uh, five consultants at separate stations and uh, so one was uh, the radial nerve palsy and the second was again a nerve related question which was classification of nerve injury so these two were related to nerve right yes, and uh, one was cleft surgery and the second one was also feeding 
uh, of mm. course also the pvc net the post burn contract yeah so you know uh, as you recall in the webinar also we discussed that day that cleft flip palate mm. you can't escape any question burn you can't escape any question right so yeah. these two are you have you will have to answer whatever you know uh, mm. wherever you are you know in the stage 2 uh, preparation you cannot miss these uh, revisions at all so all right so after you gave the uh, stage 2 did you think that it went well and you performed as per expectation uh i was not able to ask answer one or two questions they asked me about the scientist of uh, who invented the groin clap name wow. of the scientist uh, i remember half of it there were two people <laughs> um so and one was four flap palatoplasty that i was not able to answer so i felt that it was okay like uh, yeah. not so these are i did not expect then you may not mm -hmm. answer which is okay as i said that you know see what they are actually looking at in the stage 2 is mainly the approach what you have plus mm -hmm. you may not answer all the questions again like you know even 85% is good enough uh, and always you know your one answer will lead to the other question so if you are mm -hmm. answering something then they will always take you to uh, the next question the next level question so it's okay and um, yeah so uh, what uh, what motivates to one motivates you to become a plastic surgeon i will say that i feel that uh, surgery is an art and uh, plastic surgery is the most artistic of the branches among the surgeries So I don't know why I like it so much, yeah. but uh, that is the only basis that I can find. There's no right. logic behind it, but uh, I did not like anything else much more than plastic surgery. Most of my friends are choosing surgical yeah. gastro, onco, neuro, but I don't know why I moved up to this. I don't know actually. So, uh, Doctor Vanna, if I would um, ask you to list five most important. strategies maybe you could call it or you know plan a five point plan for the people who are preparing for plastic surgery what it would be and let's say that somebody who wants to prepare early on let's say somebody who wants to start in the second year of ms for example um is there a, a you know path that you can show them or you know what could work what you think you could have done better of course you you've gotten aims rank 1 which is it can't get better you know but still uh, if if i ask you to just you know chart out the journey for anybody who's aspiring to be in your position i think first and foremost is the mindset like you have to believe that you can do it and you have to be sure about it that you have to do it there should be no two ways that i sh will do it or i will not do it you have to make a path for yourself and everybody has their own path everybody decides how to go around it it's not necessary that whatever somebody is telling me that will be the same path for me that is the right path for me the second i think that concepts are the most important mm -hmm. whether you study from a book whether you study from uh, mcqs or whether you study from videos you have to understand the topic and not just understand uh, uh, cram it like mcqs mm -hmm. because the mcqs will not, never be the same in the question it will be the concepts that you will use examiner so much is, smarter than yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mcq is all new ma'am <laughs> uh, and third is to be calm at your mind you should not be haphazard in uh, your uh, strategies it should all be planned before and uh, even if anything bad happens in between you should follow the same path only if you're confident about it initially because at that time you were in a stable mind at uh, yeah. what time you prepared the part right. and uh, i feel that practicing the scenario of the exams mm -hmm. like it is a stressful scenario so mm -hmm. i used to uh, sit and uh, take the practice uh, questions that we have in the uh, marrow uh, mm -hmm. plastic surgery mini questions mini tests like the mm -hmm. same way that is going to be in the exams to stimulate yeah. it mm -hmm. so that i do not get anxious at that time And, yes, uh, I remain I calm. That's very. Uh, that's a very smart way of actually preparing because you know you get enamored by the whole setup and everything and the examiner in front of you and all that and it can just become very overbearing on you. So to practice that, 
ahead of time is it's absolutely it's a wonderful idea and the final one i'm waiting for the fifth one <laughs> <laughs> the final one is i think uh, you should be happy while preparing it should not be a burden it uh, should give you joy uh-huh. like you're learning something new it should not be like i have to do this i have to get this rank i have to get this seat because that only builds up the pressure Pressure. So you will so not I, be able to perform. I mean, that. you must be going ahead with no expectations at all, and it just fell into place, yeah. right? With yeah. proper strategy, yeah. of course. So you should give your best, but do not expect the best results. Yeah. So yeah, like we have the great saying in the Gita that you just do your work and leave the rest. Yeah. So it's it's been. It's such a joy to look at you right now. You know, you're so full of. <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> I'm absolutely enjoying it. And, um, I hope that you know you you will give some marks to what I put in the effort in, and uh, I'm yes, sure ma'am, it will be nice. And I can pat my back a little today. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Sure. <laughs> Uh, we'll also, you know, offline maybe we can connect to make the videos better. As a student, what you felt was lacking, I am always, you know, up for improvement. We can, and as a team, uh, you know, in Marrow, we believe in making ourselves better for the benefit of the uh, aspirants, and it should make their journey easier. That is what, with that mindset, I made all the videos, and uh, most of my COVID, uh, you know, that time off work. i invested into this so i am i'm glad that it is coming to fruition and like how you know i'm so glad today so it's been wonderful talking to you dr vanna and we hope to catch up in some conference somewhere you know we i'm sure to bump into you yeah. and uh, i'll be looking forward to it so all the best with your uh, residency in plastic surgery i'm sure that uh, the branch will be richer with people like you so you. all the best and uh, enjoy your time when when does your residency start now i think it's in jan ma'am january uh, the schedule is not yet out yeah enjoy your time so i'm absolutely stress free <laughs> 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 so, talking to you thank you so much for your time thank you ma'am okay thank you.